somewhere um, and sit around for four or five days uh, coming up with these questions and such. Once they get that, uh, the product's probably going into a more of a public beta, you know, for the TechNet. And then the product gets released, and they've made a commitment that within a month or so of release, they want to have certification available. Ideally, they'd like to have it all at the same time, but it's kind of a tricky timeline. Yeah. So, Chris, is the beta test a good way maybe just to practice? And yeah. does it also cost? No. Or does it cost twice as much? No, it costs it's... zero as much. Okay. Uh, that's the nice thing about the beta, is that you can take the beta, and if you pass it, then you, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, taking another test. So the idea, what they lure you with is, you know, hey, take, here's an opportunity to take a free beta exam. They'll reach out, you'll get the emails, um, you, you know, when the beta uh, test is, is happening. You can certainly contact folks at FileMaker to express your interest in taking the beta exam. Um, and that way it'll save you 150 bucks. So that's, th that person at the other podium would tell you that to begin with, like, hey, this one's free. Um, the format of the test. So again, you're going to sit in front of a computer, and the computer is going to be spitting out these questions for you one after another. And the questions are multiple choice questions. Okay? And, you know, when I was in, still in school, I used to hear multiple choice, and I'd think, sweet, you know, I'm a good guesser. Uh, the problem with these multiple choice questions are they're, they almost always require multiple answers. So <laughs> you can't really rest on the laurels of, oh, one of these is going to look right to me. Uh, a, a common question might be, um, for example, you know, format-wise, might be something like, uh, FileMaker allows five failed-in log attempts before halting the relogging process. What are two ways this behavior can be altered? And they'll give you four different options uh, to pick from, and then you choose from two of those. And they're a little sneaky in some of these things where, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the couple answers might just be one word off from each other. So. The idea is this will really shake out the correct answer uh, from the testers, and, and it, do, it does a pretty good job of that. So prepare yourself for that type of format. That's certainly going to help you when you go in there. Um, the ones on uh, relationships, there are some things that are called exhibits with a little button at the bottom of the screen where you hit a button and up pops a sort of a screenshot of a relationship graph, and you, you review it, and you take a look at it, and you determine uh, from whatever they're showing you what the answer or answers might be to the questions that you're taking. Um, one of the one of the things that I would one of the tips I'd give you um, I'll, I'll get to that part actually in a second I don't want to get ahead of myself uh, here's some of the most commonly asked questions about the FileMaker certification exam just the regular exam the non-beta version uh, FileMaker does in fact have a 14 day retesting policy so what that means is you can take the test as many times as you'd like um, but you have to wait 14 days in between taking those tests. As a matter of fact, uh, I wish the DMV had the same policy for my driver's uh, test. Uh, when I first moved to California, I failed the written test like three times in a row and had to take the driver's one at the age of 20 or something like that. It's ridiculous. So maybe it's a good idea to, well, actually, after the second one, someone handed me a little book and said, you know, sir, maybe you might want to take a look at this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically what they're saying here is, you know, uh, give yourself a couple weeks and, you know, come try it again. But you can take it um, over and over and over and over again. Um, and it, well, yeah, no, you don't really want to. But you know what? And don't feel bad if you do. A lot, a lot. I, someone whispered to me once that the majority of the people who pass the exam don't do it on their first time. So, uh, and I've heard other people who pass on the first time at le bragging at levels that somehow make it seem like that's some elite thing to do. But frankly, it doesn't matter. It, it, you pass it after the third time. Pass it after the third, whatever. Who cares? Um, FileMaker, so there's no lim limit uh, uh, of times that you can take it. Of course, go in there thinking this is the last time you're going to have to take this test and, uh, and you'll pass. And everything will be fine. Uh, be aware that FileMaker does get this information. As a matter of fact, FileMaker just put something new on their website that if you're uh, listed on the website as a consultant or a solution provider or something like that, your certification icon will appear, apparently, allegedly, within 24 hours of you passing the test. So clearly, Prometric is communicating with FileMaker. Is there Same. any place that the scores are accessible to anybody? No. Unless you work for uh, FileMaker. Uh, right. It, not at all. And, it sh and nor should they be. I mean, this is, per this is private, personal information. Um, 
you know, just like failing the driver's test uh, three times, you don't need anyone knowing your business on that, right? It's not so, an algorithm that says this guy passed. Right, no, there's no, it, there, it, unless you work for FileMaker and the people in developer relations do have this data and they do look at this data. As a matter yeah. of fact, uh, you know, there's uh, certain individuals out there, if, you're, if you are at a, par or a partner organization, they will look to see if you've taken and passed the exam yet, if you're a trainer. You know, you have to do it by a certain time, all that kind of stuff. So that information is available to them. Now, your actual score will never be available to you. Um, unless you score, like, a perfect score, then the, you know, the rumor mill goes crazy. Uh, I think one guy got a perfect score, like, on the first test, and I think someone said something, and then, you know, blah, 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 right? <laughs> but what you get upon the completion of the exam is a pass or fail. It's, it'll be the longest 10 seconds of your life. Yeah. Uh, while you're waiting <laughs> well, for that. Like nine. So. Yeah, yeah, well, right, yeah, right. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Um, or 11. Um, so you will be, it'll tell you, congratulations, uh, you've passed the exam. Um, or uh, I don't know, some, something nice. Yeah, sorry. We'll yeah. see you again in 14 you, days. You sorry. <laughs> But one thing that's cool that they did add in there that I found to be rather useful is, um, I mean, in the early versions, it just said you passed, you failed, you know, that was it. But now there's a little chart that they give you in there that breaks down essentially all these categories here, um, and it gives you a percentage of questions that you got correct on of those. So now, um, I don't remember if on the actual live one, if they, if they give you that on your printout. I think maybe they do. Do they do that? Okay, cool. And so that way you can take it with you and say, oh, I'm not, I, you know, if I do take this again, even if you pass, you know, it's good to go and look at the areas that maybe you should have studied up on a little bit more beforehand. Um, uh, so that's very useful. No papers, phones, calculators allowed in the testing area. I mean, they're pretty hardcore about that. It differs from place to place, but a lot of them will give you little mini whiteboards with a thing, because you there are some things you're going to want to sketch out, you know, to wrap your head around the, the questions that are being asked. Uh, but they don't mess around uh, in these testing centers. Here are my tips. These are tips from Chris to you guys about how uh, good ways to, uh, sometimes passing is just a matter of one or two questions, right? Um, so here are some tips to guarantee to get you at least one or two extra questions correct uh, on this exam. First of all, the way the Prometric does the test, uh, and you might not know this if you haven't gone in there before, um, but there's this ability to mark questions. So what, what I like to do when I go into the test is I'll, I'll whip through every single uh, question in the entire exam. So you can just hit next, 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 marking all of them to come back later. And by the way, you can just skip them without marking, and you still get an opportunity to go back and review these questions at the end of the exam. So it's kind of like when you're buying something online, it says review your order before confirming. You get one of those chances at the end. So what I like to do is I'll go through... And there are going to be, you know, four or five real no-brainer easy ones in there, right? So whip through those puppies, answer all the easy ones, and mark all the ones and come back to them afterwards. And the reason I like to do that is because you do only get two hours. It sounds like a long time, but what you don't want to have happen to you is you get stuck on a couple questions, and all of a sudden time expires. And unbeknownst to you, the last two questions in the exam were like, you know, what number comes after 12, you know, like that kind of thing, and you got those wrong. So make sure you see everything, answer the no-brainer ones. No-brainer will be defined differently by each test taker, of course, but make sure you get those in there. Also, it exposes you to some of the questions that might be similar to each other, like when you're talking about these uh, relationship-related ones. A lot of times you're using the same exhibit or the same example all the way through, so if you if you then go back and do all of those in a row, you know, you're, you're kind of in the zone, your mind is focused on that type of thinking, um, and it can certainly be advantageous for you to uh, be able to pass. But here's my, okay, and then review your answers before you finish. Whatever time you have left, I strongly recommend you use it. Uh, myself, back in school, I used to be one of those guys who just finished the test and just walked out of the room. It was like having a short class that day. Um, but I always, you know, I just used to second guess myself if I went back. But taking these tests, I take all the two hours I can, or four hours, whichever one uh, you end up taking, uh, to make sure that what you, you chose was correct. And I say that because I always catch myself on at least one or two that I meant to hit this button, I just hit the wrong button. You know, just sort of a carbon error. So it's worth it to go back and do those. But here's the biggest one. This, 
I wouldn't even put this in my uh, slides if there were going to be FileMaker people here uh, because it sort of gives away a little...